In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As many of you know, the Diocese of Niagara, the wider church of which St. George's is a part, entered into its next step in the discernment process of preparing to elect a new bishop. Over the past week, the seven candidates for the office of bishop went on a series of meet and greets around the diocese. I was one of the seven. And so we had these different events where we were each given five minutes to talk about our vision for the future of the church, to talk about whatever gifts we think we might offer that vision, and then for people to come up to us afterwards and ask us questions. Now, very foolishly, I went into this week not worried because I thought I speak in front of people all the time. People ask me questions all the time. How hard could it be? Well, let me tell you, it was hard in about 250 ways that I didn't anticipate. <laughs> it was quite an overwhelming and intense week. Now, thankfully, I think it's fair to say that all seven candidates felt the same way. And at one point in the middle of the week, one of my fellow candidates, Rob Herkmans, had this really interesting insight to offer. He said, you know, this is all crazy, and I have no idea what I'm doing, and that's okay. It's okay to be stretched outside of our comfort zone. It's okay to be in over our heads, because when we're in over our heads, it forces us to get down on our knees. It forces us to remember who is actually in charge. Now, I really relate to this. I can sail along quite complacent in my own sense of confidence and competence. I can foolishly think, I've got this. And I can forget that this is about a partnership every step of the way. Now, I, I got to thinking about a well-worn dictum. You've probably heard us say this. God won't give you more than you can handle. Have you heard that before? I think we really get that wrong as Christians. God does give us more than we can handle. God does give us more than we can handle and that's okay. Because the good news is, you're not in this alone. And you do not have to handle this by yourself. Jesus builds this part of the teaching into his ministry right from the get-go. Now, the gospel passage that Reverend Scott just read for us is still at the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And right away, Jesus is successful and is popular, and people come to him in droves, ready to crown him as their savior. They want him to tell them what is right and what is wrong, and he teaches with authority that they have never heard before. They want him to battle the forces of evil on their behalf, and he casts out demons. They want him to fix them, and they come to him with all of their ailments, and they ask for his healing. But for every blessing that Jesus gives the people who, comes to, to, who come to him, he also challenges them. Because Jesus is not going to be a one-stop God shop. God is not the God of the quick fix. God is the God of the long-term relationship who wants to walk with us every step of the way. 
And so for every blessing, Jesus unsettles and upsets as well. For example, we have this nameless woman, Simon Peter's mother-in-law, who has a fever and who Jesus heals, and she gets right up and serves them supper. And those two things, the fact that she is not named and the fact that she goes right back to looking after the household, both of those things are pieces of the status quo in which Jesus is ministering. Women often weren't named because they weren't considered to be as much of human beings as the men were. And it was assumed that the woman's place was in the home. And yet, very quickly, as Jesus' ministry is going to unfold in front of us, we are going to see Jesus upset those assumptions every step of the way. He is going to call women to go on the road with him and the other guys. It is going to be the women who are going to be the fiercest supporters of Jesus' ministry. Jesus is going to raise up women as evangelists and healers and teachers. It's going to be the women who will stay with Jesus to the bitter end and who will be the first witnesses of the resurrection. And that place, that place of women in Jesus' ministry is going to upset and unsettle every step of the way. Likewise, as Jesus comes to this first town of Capernaum, as he is so successful and people flock to him, what would have made perfect sense would have been for Jesus and his disciples to set up a sort of spiritual center right there in Capernaum. And people could have come to him for healing and teaching, and it could have been a very comfortable and comforting ministry. And instead, Jesus takes this ministry on the road. And as we watch this ministry unfold, we'll see him lead his followers into dark and disturbing places, giving them more than they can handle every step of the way and calling them to turn back to the guidance and strength of God. And lest we think that Jesus is asking anything of us and his followers that he himself is not prepared to embrace, he shows us in these first opening days of his ministry that he also has been given more than he can handle. And so what does he do? He slips away in those quiet first hours of the morning. He slips away to a quiet place and he prays. Because he cannot and he will not handle this alone. I suspect that there are many of us here today who could tell stories of when we have been overwhelmed, when we have had more than we can bear by ourselves. And we probably have stories of how strength and grace has come to us from outside and around us. Some of us might be in the middle of that story right now, feeling like there is more on us than we ourselves can handle. And all of us need to hear that good news that the kingdom of God has come near. You are not alone, and you do not have to handle this alone. There's a personal message for us in the gospel today. But there is also a communal message for us in the gospel today. A message for us as the Church of St. George's. On our Vestry Sunday, the day of our annual general meeting, when we look back to the past year and we look forward and plan for the year to come. I look at the blessings of this past year, our amalgamation with Grace Church, 
our welcoming of many households from the parish of St. James, our welcoming of many households from various other places and backgrounds. I think of the ways in which we have supported and been able to support the Pekanjikum Water Project and our refugee sponsorship and the refurbishment of our pipe organ. I think of the new ministries that have emerged, of our long established ministries that have been blessed. I think of how we have been able to finish 2017 once again in the black. And for each of these blessings of this past year, it's important to note that each of these blessings at one point was a challenge. And it was a question that we were asking, God, how can we get through this? God, how can we do what is being asked of us? I look forward to 2018 and of course, there are challenges in front of us. Our downtown core is shifting and changing, and the needs of the community around us are shifting and changing, and more is being asked of us as a downtown church. I recognize as well that as much as it is overwhelming and intimidating for me to be on the bishop ballot, it also raises questions for us as a community about the potential for uncertainty in our leadership going into 2018. And at the same time as we face these specific challenges, we also have to acknowledge the basic challenge, the basic foolhardiness of being a church at all in a world that is changing so quickly and that sometimes seems as if they don't need God or organized religion. For all of those challenges in front of us, I invite you to join with me in saying thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for giving us challenges that we can't handle alone. Thanks be to God for calling us to get on our knees again to turn back to God as our strength and our guide. Thanks be to God, who is not the God of quick fixes. Thanks be to God, who is in this as a long-term relationship and who wants to be with us year after year, day after day, moment after moment, step after step. Amen.